excited to introduce Jake Graffinino from uh, Lenora Ryan University. I hope I'm pronouncing that school name correctly. I, I looked it up on YouTube to make sure. Um, no, Good, good, good. All right. So uh, Jake is here to talk about his experience with um, with academia and I am going to hand things over to him. Jake, I understand you have a PowerPoint to share, so whenever you're ready, you can hit that share button and share your screen. OK, sounds good. Just need to find it real quick. OK. Rachel, are you able to see that? Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, I can it's see, on the screen. Yep. I can see the PowerPoint. Not this. Uh, yeah. Not there. You go. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so I'll just kind of say this a few times in this that uh, this is the first uh, academic support platform that we have had. So there's been a lot of things that I probably could go into, especially um, just seeing how this works. Um, just kind of where we're at now that um, you know. This is something that our students have been getting used to and just more good things to come. But I, I think I'll highlight um, a few of those things, especially as it you know pertains to Lenore Ryan. So um, so we have three locations where our main campus is in uh, Hickory, North Carolina, and we have uh, two other campuses that uh, mostly cater to graduate students in Asheville, North Carolina and Columbia, South Carolina. Um, All together, we house um, a little over 2,600 students and 1,700 of those are undergraduate and 900 of those are graduate. And uh, just to kind of get an idea of, you know, our setup, it's our student to faculty ratio is 13 to 1 and our average class size is about 22. So depending on uh, the class, the major, um, that can vary just depending on those sizes. Um, so a little about me, um, so I oversee our academic support at the university um, and the lower learning commons. So that is where we're housed, which is on the second floor of our library. Um, we have multiple offices within here, um, but the big part of our student experience here is to utilize this space for different support opportunities to, um, you know, have group study, um, but also just the different supports we have here in the office. So um, we have our Office of Student Success in here. Um, and just uh, many other entities that are here to help the students um, have about six years in higher education. And I actually started at Lenore Rhine um, in fall of 22. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty recent here. Um, you know, our use of academia started in October. Um, we had had some initial conversations um, during the summer and uh, spent a decent amount of time when I got here getting the um, platform set up. And so Prior to this, um, as I stated before, we did not have a, um, a support platform, and I'll kind of go into a little bit of detail about really what we used and um, how honestly academia has helped that out a lot. Um, so like I said, we're in the Office of Student Success, um, so we have our advising center and our academic support. Um, and a good part about us all being housed here is it's just a very easy uh, way to s serve students. And so, um, you know, whether that's I'm, meeting with uh, academic advisors to go over students who may need support. It's, you know, just one stop for them to be able to go from that office to here uh, to be able to set them up in a place that, um, you know, they have access and then they are able to, you, you know, utilize their time here. And so some other services that we have that, um, you know, I either help with the operations or I directly oversee is our subject tutoring. Um, so we mostly do 100 to 200 level courses. Some of those, um, you know, depending on just kind of the need um, if we need to go higher within 300 to 400 level um, a lot of times that has to do with the professor so if we know um, you know a, a student and a professor have been talking and, and they get enough of a need um, we'll take their tutors in from a supervision standpoint um, but most of the times they're embedded into the classroom and uh, just utilize some of our space here um, we also have academic coaching, um, you know, from a mentorship side where, you know, recognizing that students may not need the subject material, but they actually need um, more of the organizational help and, you know, just pieces to put together so that they're successful. Um, and then we also have our mathematics and computer science lab, um, our speech preparation lab and our writing center all here um, that are offered to be able to do those. And all of those are um, utilized in academia. 
Um, so the need for us really just came, you know, we had our informational meetings um, in process when I started, um, you know, and so a lot of what we did prior, especially, you know, from this part of the office was that we definitely utilized spreadsheets just to keep track of data, but we also used our Microsoft forms uh, to make appointments. So it was pretty time consuming. Uh, one of the ways that I know um, the different services did, so I can use my example for um, especially the tutoring services was we'd um, have a Microsoft form come through and then it would start an email chain between me and the student um, and then me setting them up with a tutor and then them speaking on what time works for them. So, you know, most tutoring appointments um, between, you know, getting responses and things like that would take me at least up to an hour. So it was not very um, efficient. And so um, we knew we needed something that was going to allow for the student to be able to just go in there and see it for themselves, um, you know, and our other services in the second floor were, were pretty similar, um, you know, whether they had a booking site or, you know, whether it was just drop in, you know, there were some things that we were making sure we wanted to track. So, for example, wanting to know what our usage time and what times to offer more services, um, you know, we are majority student athlete. Um, so we do have a high percentage of student athletes here and a lot of times they have requirements to use um, our vicinity for, you know, different services, whether that's study hall or anything like that. Um, you know, and we wanted to recognize that with, you know, busy times and not busy times and know when to offer more services, whether that's to have more group tutors, whether that's to have workshops available um, so that it helped them so that we weren't missing, you know, a huge opportunity. And I think that, you know, we knew by being able to track that through academia and sign in, I think that was going to be really helpful for us. Um, so our implementation and usage, so we, um, like I said, we started in October after midterms. It took a lot, a decent amount of time for us to get set up. We didn't want to just, you know, just turn this over and, you know, just kind of just go with it. Um, thankful I spent a lot of time talking to Nick, but I think, you know, we really just wanted to see what the, you know, the student reaction was to this. And so um, after midterms, we decided we were going to, you know, kind of slowly bring the students into it. Um, and we were pretty amazed immediately um, how students were able to get accustomed to that. You know, I um, my previous experience came from a university that did have this, so I was I was very used to it. And so um, when I came here, you know, just starting to see that students who have become more involved in technology starting to understand that, but also being able to see the students that we knew were used to the old ways as well. So we wanted to use the fall to see where students stood on that. Um, in this semester, um, in the spring, we've been um, fully having students use it, um, and it seems the more we've gone into it, um, it's just kind of trickling down that the students are starting to understand this platform and use it fully. Um, one of our big things that we do is, so we do have um, our university study hall program here, and we, you know, it's majorly athletic, but we do have other groups that you know, use it, um, whether that's students on probation um, in different clubs. And so this has been a great thing for us to be able to track, especially in the user group setting, because it's a very easy way to see when people are in here. You know, there's not the confusion of, well, this person signed me in, this person didn't. You know, it was just a lot easier for us to see. You came in at this time, we have notes here, um, and it was great for us. And that even helped from, you know, an academic service standpoint of, you know, I have a tutor that said, a meeting went this way, you know, and um, it seems like the meeting lasted five minutes. What's going on? So that was easier for us to track. Um, I think the import the appointments for all of our services have been great. Um, it's really, you know, get put us in a position to where we we see what the students need, you know, and it's not just a um, we're seeing this person's getting, you know, a certain amount of um, bookings. This person's getting a drop in that we haven't been able to track. It's all coming to one spot. And then, like I said, with drop in sign in, um, that's been pretty big for us because, you know, there are going to be times where students, you know, may not want to look and make the appointments themselves. And so the drop in aspect of, you know, when they come in and be able to explain, you know, that we do have tutors available, we have, you know, this service available, um, it's made it a lot easier for them. And I think. One of the biggest things uh, for me that I think has been great has been the surveys, um, you know, so we we have our iPads out there. And so when a student goes to sign in, um, one of the, the surveys that we made was uh, for their first appointment. Uh, it's got a confidentiality agreement on it um, that they and the tutor sign. And then um, there's also, you know, uh, certain questions with, you know, how well they're doing in their class 
you know, what um, sharing specifically with me, um, you know, the grade that they have, um, you know, and just so that we can kind of give a little bit of an idea of, you know, if they do tutoring for this many months, what does that look like for their final grade? And so I think that's, you know, pretty huge for us to see on improvement um, of our services. And that's something we want to continue to improve on. And then um, offering them a survey um, in their email to see how appointments went, just so that we know how um, they're meshing with our tutors. Some of the report and tracking data, um, I think this has been, you know, really important, especially since this is the first time that we've had a a platform to be able to use. And so I'm um, able to have study hall reports that we can uh, specifically have sent out every week to coaches and group advisors. It's been great, um, you know, because it really honestly makes my life a little bit easier in regards to sending, but it also is pretty accurate to where, you know, if a coach has a question, I can go back, look at the notes that I've made, whether or not a student signed out or anything like that. Um, I can do the same thing with the academic services if they have questions about tutoring appointments and things like that. Uh, payroll, this has been pretty great um, just to be able to, we use um, the platform Paycom. Um, and so being able to compare that um, and, you know, and, and part of the training with my tutors is making sure they understand that. So if this is accurate and I can ask questions based on this, it makes a lot of time uh, more efficient when it comes to tracking pay. Um, missed and canceled appointments, you know, the old way I'd be, you know, whether it be on a spreadsheet or whether it was an email, there may be some time that passes before I see, you know, a canceled appointment and or a missed appointment and it's made it easier for us to be able to have conversations with the students um, to really just kind of see you know because sometimes students are given appointments based on you know an advisor suggested and they may have never had any indication on whether they were going to come or not so um, i think we can kind of get the idea of you know based on this quickly um, where the student is so that we know okay maybe something's not working in the way we're doing appointments or you just have never had any interest in using academic services. Um, like I said, the grade of, of a student before and after has just been, you know, huge for us just to see how we are doing. Um, and then I think one of the big ones are the number of students at a time, um, you know, so we are on a second floor and times it, it gets busy, right? So, I mean, I think, you know, conversations of how we're using space, how we're, you know, um, when are the times that we need more people, when are the times that, um, we need to be offering more and then uh, just those services at a high versus low traffic. Do I need seven tutors in this place when there's only going to be about 20 people showing up versus 150? I think that um, definitely shows within that da that data. Um, I think some of the challenges that we've overcame is, you know, um, operation hours and usage. So for us, we have the different services of, you know, the writing center, um, the math lab and the speech lab and um, you know, as we're all, you know, using this platform, we're starting to see, you know, just kind of the need to make sure we're operating a lot of things together, you know, um, because we are a, um, a, a single center license, which I believe is now Academia Light. Um, and we recognize that if we want to use this to the full capacity, we need to make sure some things are similar, even though we're offering potential different services. So that's been really good for us to have those conversations um you know and and knowing that okay if somebody in the writing center has a question to me about why they're not seeing anybody but we're recognizing that they may see something in the evening then it gives us you know an opportunity to talk about okay so we see our operating times right now and as we continue to move forward what are going to be some similarities and what are some differences that we need to have um i think the big things are students knowing of support but also knowing of this platform you know like i said the rollout was pretty sudden um you know so i think we are still getting students used to using this platform. And so we've been using the spring um, just to present on it, to market it, to, you know, um, kind of have students get used to it in a way that is going to be helpful. But we also recognize that this is a good opportunity to, you know, have materials, but also prep students that are going to be coming in um, as freshmen so that this is a thing of normalcy. And I think that's going to be big for us as we've continued to see, you know, for us specifically, what is working and what are some things we need to change. And then I, I think the big one is, you know, learning how we can serve the student. Um, you know, we 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 will see through this and through the data. What are the courses that, you know, that have the most need and, and what are some things that we can do to supply more tutors and and other support? And I think that is something that we're definitely seeing through whether that's the request or the amount of appointments that we're actually having this semester. Um, 
this is a little bit small. So um, I was, this was something that I pulled from uh, last fall, and I think it's um, you know a pretty a pretty good thing to see, which is that you know we could see when was the busiest time for us, and you know we were recognizing that you know at certain times there were a large number of student athletes that were using um, this space and. Um, the times tended to be, you know, in the evenings and we were recognizing the shorter amount of times and it was really big for us to make sure what we were offering was going to match that, um, you know, and so um, it was good for us because by seeing the times that, you know, say it was going to be busy, you know, there's going to be about 80 people in here for study hall. Well, other students may say, well, it's that's when a lot of the athletes come and they may not. So we were looking at those those times that you know, didn't have as much people and we were like, okay, so I think we can actually um, try to reach out to those students then. And that's been something that's been pretty good for us as we've been, you know, reaching out to those students and having workshops and, and seeing some success on, hey, like we know there are going to be other times when students come, but they don't want it to be here when it's packed. And this was a really good thing for us to see. Um, so how we train our tutors for this, like I said, last fall was just so sudden that we um, I was honestly kind of training them in different sessions throughout the weeks. But um, we are through CRLA and, you know, we had a full session on this in the spring, um, you know, and I think it was it was pretty good just to see the students and how they, the tutors and how they had embraced it, um, you know, and, and there were some differences that within um the centers and how we are in the set and the services and how we offered them that, you know, we wanted to make sure was clear and how we trained and I'll show one of the in a second, but um, you know, and I've, I've continued to have workshops on this and as we continue to learn different things, whether it's through um, what Engineerica offers and, you know, just being able to show that with my staff, it's been um, pretty helpful. And I think, you know, it's one of those things that they're continuing to learn. Um, and then one of the coolest things that I've seen is just kind of with it being a smaller university is when we teach the tutors um, and utilizing, you know, kind of word of mouth where, you know, I've got um, somebody who may be a who may be in a sorority who, you know, um, with their members wants to know how to use academia. Well, I've got a tutor that's pretty embedded in that and can uh, teach the students on how to do it. And that's been a lot of where we've seen success, whether I've talked to a student and said, this person taught me, um, I know they're a tutor here. And so we've seen success outside of our marketing, but other pieces where, you know, the tutors have to kind of taken it upon themselves to help teach the students what they know. And so um, that's really helped get the information out so students know how to use this platform and, you know, know what best to look for when it comes to academic support. Um, I put this on here just because it is a pretty um, interesting example of, of with our services and being a, um, you know, a single center, you know, we, we recognize that each service is going to be different. So one of the things that we've had to pay attention to um, specifically is when we're when we're making our time blocks for our tutoring schedules um, is the subject area and the services. Um, because we've recognized and I'm, I'm sure other people have done it at some point that, you know, if you have every subject area and every service um, selected, you're going to have tutoring appointments that absolutely make no sense. And so um, that has been part of the training that I have done, especially with the different services. So, for example, on the subject areas for my my subject tutors, um, one of the things that they do are, you know, they're just going to choose the classes that um, they will tutor for um, and then they just choose the, the service. Well, the um, writing center is a little bit different is because they're going to help with writing for every single uh, class that that is asked of them. And so, for instance, they will it says right here uh, that number is 507 like on subject area. They will be 507 out of 507 uh, while with the service, they're just going to be the writing center. And so um, those have been some some things that we've continued to to make sure are known because we you know want to avoid as much as possible that a student sees a class that we may not have a tutor for, especially a 400 level class and um, they think we have tutoring for it and we don't want to confuse them. So, for example, that is, you know, that's how we've operated within our services um, just to make sure. But there are some differences in in kind of making sure that we piece those things together as well. Um, some future implementation for us, you know, we recognize this is our first year using the service and we um, are pretty happy with, you know, 
where we're at. And I know that, you know, as we go into the summer and we get feedback, um, I think continued improvement. Um, I, you know, I think we ourselves have considered academia versus academia light. We are a small university. Um, but, you know, I think the, the thing that we're focusing on right now is, you know, whether there's the need for, um, you know, more of what the academia offers versus where are we at on usage? And so I think those are some things that we're going to look into before um, making any decisions in the future. Um, you know, and I think the other thing we'll continue to pay attention to is, is you know, how much traffic do we have? You know, in the fall, it's definitely going to be more than the spring. A lot of that has to do with, you know, um, if we have student athletes that come in as freshmen and are required to have study hall, they may or may not use the support services. If they are not in study hall, it's making sure, OK, um, if they need to get in here, how do we get them in here? But I think you know, we want to continue to increase the usage of others, but also making sure that they know what they're looking for, that it's something that if they have questions with the on academia, that they're able uh, to understand it and they know where to go if they need some help. Um, I think the big one is as we continue to um, bring this up to professors and we've gone to their uh, their classes and taught on this, um, we just want to make sure that, you know, they're they're pushing academic support services through academia um, and making sure that they understand. So we've continued just to, you know, slowly but surely get that to them. Um, the other piece that we will work on probably in the summer is, um, you know, online options for graduate students. Like I said, our one of our campuses in Asheville, um, you know, so if they need to use the Writing Center, most times they're just going on Zoom or Teams, um, and we want to make sure that we're incorporating this for them so um, that we can track it and we're making sure that we're, we're seeing who is using the platform there as well. Um, and then tutor options not found on the platform. The difference between this and the Microsoft um, form that we use is if a student put a, a class that we didn't have tutoring for, I could just tell them or I could find an alternative. Um, and if they don't see it within academia, most times they just don't do anything. And so I think, um, you know, one of the things I'm working on right now is, you know, putting some information within, um, you know, our, our page uh, at the beginning to make sure that they can see that if they need to, then they can send, um, whether it's me an email or um, send to a different link, something that shows, you know, the different um, class that they may need and then I can move forward from that. And then I think the big one is catching all appointments. Um, you know, we've had this, you know, service for a few months and um, I think there are some students who may drop in and get, three minutes of help and they may not, not sign in. But I think for us, we want to continue to see, you know, what's a track and what's good and, and what needs to be fixed. And um, so I think we're working on that. And then we have some other um, programs like nursing who has, you know, embedded tutors, but they also um, will hold different study sessions and things like that, but they work through our office. So making sure that, it, you know, if we're keeping track of the students that are in there, is there change, is there things like that? Um, and then we, you know, can make sure, like I said before, we're just catching all of the students who are using um, our services. But I think overall for us, this has been great because we are learning more and it is helping us to evaluate um, where we're going, how our support services look, and you know what more we can do to use this platform to make sure um, you know that we're offering the best support services. So that is, I believe, all I have. Thank you. That's that was very awesome, very thorough. Um, thank you so much for all that information. Um, I want to put it out to the uh, to the audience to see if we had any questions today uh, or comments. I know I see one from Nick. He says, I like how you are customizing the services and subjects when scheduling tutors in academia and knowing exactly what times for each day of the week are busiest through the traffic analysis reports will help spread the team across the center to best serve students. Um, I'm always amazed how quickly our clients figure out how the software works and get get it uh, going in a short amount of time. Yeah, because you, you guys are a new client, a newer client, and I remember in our initial meeting together being that's why, you know, I asked you to come on this meeting because I was impressed by how thoroughly you guys are already have already implemented it. Um, and I know you said it was it was pretty sudden for the students. I hope that um, were they uh, remind me, were they used to any sort of tracking program? Uh, you said this was your first software, but were you using any sort of tracking system like even paper, paper and pencil? Uh, yeah, it was mostly a spreadsheet. Um, a lot of what we would do is we would uh, build the appointments and then um, it would be then a, uh, a tutor would fill out a Microsoft form that would have kind of a tutor log. And then mm -hmm. that's how we're tracking, you know, who's coming in and cancellations and things like that. But sometimes like, I mean, you know, with situations like that, whether a student does it or sends it, you're you may be having some fall through the cracks. 
Right, right. It's not. Yeah, it's a multi step process using multiple systems. Um, I think, yeah, overall, I, I can understand the adjustment period, but I think overall they'll find the system is a lot better and hopefully they'll they'll see the benefits very quickly. Does anybody else have any comments or questions uh, for Jake? Okay, I know we have a small, like I said, I know we have a smaller group than normal today, but we, I, I'm pleased to see uh, folks uh, coming in. I hope that if you are coming in here on your spring break that um, you found this to be a good use of your time. Um, and I want to thank, I want to thank Jake for being with us today. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that we have our feedback survey. Let me go ahead and grab that link there to put in the comments. Is that it? Uh, I think that's it, right? Is that it? Um, yeah, sorry, my computer is deciding to be slow today. Uh, I don't know. I think it. Yeah. OK, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing that um that bracket didn't um didn't open. Uh, so if uh, if anybody has a moment to fill out that survey for us, that would be really helpful. Um, and I want to thank everybody for your time. I hope everybody has a great rest of your week and thank you for coming in today. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.